Hello from SlideNerd and hello from Weaves. What's up folks? In this video, I'm going to talk about the grid view in Android. In my previous videos, I've been talking about the list view, its optimization, its customization with an array adapter and a base adapter. Here, I'm going to show you guys the concept behind the grid view. And in the next video, we're going to go to Android Studio and start making a grid view. So let's get started. If you're a beginner, then the first question you ask me, hey, what is a grid view? This is what a grid view looks like. What you have is some data arranged in the form of rows and columns. Now remember, it can be very simple text views over here, or you can define your own complex views. Like for this example, if you notice there's an image view, there's a text view below it, the image view, and that structure is repeated across rows and columns over here. So a grid view is nothing but an adapter view that displays items in a two-dimensional scrollable grid. Now remember, if the number of items exceeds the screen space, then automatic scrolling is added for you guys. More results are generated and displayed. When the user clicks on one of the items, you can perform some action with the help of an on-item click listener. The grid items are inserted to the layout using a base adapter. Now. If you guys have been seeing my previous video about the list view with a base adapter, this is just the same. All the thing that differs is that you use a grid view in place of a list view. That's all folks. There is just no difference. Only difference other than that being the fact that the list view loads things vertically. This loads stuff along rows and columns. That is the only difference. Alright, to give you a rough idea of how things look like, this is what the grid view structure is supposed to be like. It is from developer.android.com. You have these blocks which are arranged along rows and columns. Now each of these blocks might be a simple view, like a text view. It can be a complex view, like a relative layout which in turn contains other views inside. So you get the basic idea right now, right? So let's go ahead and see how the grid view works. So here on the left side, I have a data source it contains some names like Jacob, Mason, Ethan, Noah, whatever. Now this data source can be anything. It can be an SQL-like database. It can be some simple XML file. It can be your strings.xml file. That doesn't matter. What matters is you have this base adapter. Now if you guys have seen my previous videos about the adapter, you remember that the adapter is something responsible for taking items from the data source creating views out of those items and giving this view objects back to your compound views over here. So in my case, these items, Jacob, Mason, Ethan, Noah, they are taken here. The base adapter probably puts them inside a simple text view. These text views are given back here to your grid view. And that is why you see rows and columns data arranged along that format. This is how the grid view works. Remember, the adapter is solely responsible for creating a view object and you can control how this view object can be created. For example, you can have a simple text view created over here or you can actually create a compound view over here. Like for example, creating a relative layout, then putting an image view inside, putting a text view inside, setting those values and giving that entire structure to the grid view here on the right side. The control is totally on your side. All right, so at this point, you probably ask me the question, what are the steps in, in creating a grid view? So these are the following steps. Step one, define the array or a data source like we discussed. Step two, create a base adapter and tell it how to display the data by specifying a layout for a single view. Now remember, the base adapter creates a single view object, right? Now that can be a simple object like a text view or it can be a compound object like a relative layout. So you have to exactly specify how that layout should appear. Then step three, define what happens when the user interacts with the row in the grid view. That means what do you, what do, you do when someone clicks on something inside your grid view, all right? Before we move any further, let's take a look at the properties of the grid view. So what do I mean by those properties? Let's take a look at certain attributes. First is to control the number of columns inside your grid view. For that, you have an attribute, which is Android num columns. You can say something like Android num columns equals to three, which means there will always be three columns, regardless of which device you're using. Now remember, this is a bad thing. Some devices have small screen sizes, some have big. So if you say that there should be three columns always, 
you're probably going to mess your user interface on a smaller device. So it's better to use this value called auto fit, which simply means keep the number of columns variable as per device size. The other property that we have allows us to control the spacing between columns. You can say Android vertical spacing equals to 5 dp, horizontal spacing is 5 dp. What you simply do is define how much space should exist between two items horizontally and vertically. Then you also can control the width of columns using Android column width. Here you simply specify the number of pixels you want the column to be wide. But remember, this is a very tricky part. If you are using images, you have to make sure that the column width has been calculated appropriately for images over here. This last case is pretty tricky. In most cases, after you finish adding the columns, you're always going to end up with some extra space on the screen. So this attribute enables you to control what to do with that extra space. There are four modes. Android stretch mode is none. Android stretch mode is column width, spacing width, and spacing width uniform. Now let me actually show you what each of these modes does in the next slide. So here, if you guys notice, I have four different images. In the first image, it is the default one where I say Android stretch mode equals to none. What happens simply is that you have your columns here and there is some extra space on the right side after adding the columns. This extra space has been left as it is. You are doing nothing with it. In the second one, which says column width, you take this extra space, you divide it equally and allocate that to the columns over here. So in other words, each column appears a bit more stretched than the first one, right? Then you have the third one in which what you do is instead of dividing this extra space, giving it to the columns, you actually give it to the spaces in between the columns. And that means there were two spaces between the columns and now those spaces are a bit more stretched as you notice in this image compared to the first two images. And in the last one, which is Android stretch mode is spacing width uniform. Instead of just taking the space, dividing it and giving it in between, what you do is you divide it equally on both sides, that is before the start and after the end of the column. And that is why it looks like this. You'll have two more over here and two more over here. In total, there will be six rectangles in this case. So these are the four different stretch modes of your grid view. So in the next video, I'm going to go inside Android Studio and I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple grid view with a base adapter. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next vid. Have a nice day.